In this session, we talk about the mathematical characterization of the periodization process. We look at the problem from a single particle perspective first, and then we derive the expressions for a bed of solid particles. Now, to start with, when a particle is placed in a fluid, there may be different forces acting on the particle. Now, typically, those forces can be characterized as three types. So, there are three forces. I mean, three types of forces. One can be considered as the external force. We will denote it by Fe. Now, this force can be the gravitational force, can be a magnetic force, electrical force, or anything else that influences the velocity of the fluid. The second one is the buoyancy force. We'll denote it by Fb. And this force is caused by the fluid that being displaced by the solid. The third one, we we'll call it the drag force. Now, the drag force results from the relative velocity between the fluid and the solid particle. Now, the external force can act in any direction. So, not necessarily it will always act like the gravitational force in the downward direction. It may act in all direction. And the fluid velocity in general can have different directions as well. Now, for the case of fluidization, we have some specific consideration. Number one, the external force is due to the gravity. Also, we will consider that, that the particle density is greater than the fluid density. Otherwise, the fluidization will not be possible. Now, based on this specific consideration for the fluidization process, let's look at how you can perform the force balance for a particle. So, if you look at a fluid column, so there is fluid inside, and you can consider if you have a solid inside the fluid volume. So, for our special case, we consider that the external force is the gravitational force, so it acts downwards. And because the fluid density is less than the solid density, buoyancy force will act upward. And also we'll have the drag force that will act upward because we are considering the fluidization condition, meaning that the fluid is moving in the upward direction. So the relative velocity of the fluid is in the upward direction. So fluid will cause a drag force in the upward direction as well. So, if we do the force balance for this case, we have the summation of all forces. If we take this direction to be downward direction to be negative, we will have Fe Now, we know that gravitational force is given by mg. So, if the mass of the particle is m, and the gravitational acceleration is g, then the gravitational force is given by mg. Fb is given by force exerted by the displaced fluid. So, whatever fluid the solid particle displaces, the force exerted by that fluid is the buoyancy force. So now for the displaced fluid, the volume is that's equal to the volume of the solid, which is given by m over rho p. So if we divide the mass of the solid by its density, we get the volume of the solid, and that volume is equal to the volume of the displaced fluid. Then we have the mass of the displaced fluid to be It's given by the volume of the displaced fluid times its density. So rho is the density of the fluid and rho p is the density of the particle. So the mass of the displaced fluid is given by m over rho p times rho. And all this gives us that the buoyancy force is 
m over rho p rho g. Note that here both the external force or the gravitational force and the buoyancy force, they do not depend on the width velocity. Now consider the scenario when you put a solid particle in a fluid volume, what happens? Now at the first instant, when you just leave it, its velocity is zero. So the only forces it has This is at the, so this is simply at the, you can consider the very first moment. Now you see here, F E is given by M G and this is given by, F B is given by M over rho P rho G. So this can simply be rewritten as rho P minus rho over rho P m g now see here we considered rho p is greater than rho so this term is positive so there is a net force acting in the positive direction and the positive direction is the downward direction for our case now also we'll have summation of f this can be given as m du over dt then the summation of force equals mass times acceleration so if there is a positive force acting in the downward direction, there will be an acceleration in the downward direction. And that what will happen that the particle will keep on moving and accelerating in the downward direction. Now as the particle start to move, then there is a relative velocity between the fluid and the particle and that will cause the drag force to come into play. So now right after the very first moment, you will have this summation of force should be given as the external force minus the buoyancy force minus the drag force. To remember that where we wrote here, this is for the very first moment where you just first drop the particle in the fluid volume. When it starts moving, the drag force comes into play and that's caused by the relative velocity between the fluid and the solid particle. Now as the drag force keeps on increasing, at some point the drag force will balance the difference between the external force or the gravitational force and the buoyancy force. So when the drag balances the difference between the external force and the buoyancy force, we'll have a situation where delta F will become zero, meaning F E will become equal to F B plus F D. This also equals M D E over D T. So when this happens, acceleration becomes zero. That means after a certain time, at some point, the particle will not accelerate anymore. So meaning that it will have a constant velocity. So when the velocity becomes constant, the drag force becomes constant and Fe and Fb, that's also do not depend on the velocity. So those are constant. And when the FD becomes constant, the summation of F becomes zero and the acceleration becomes zero and the solid particle keeps on moving at that constant velocity. That constant velocity is called the terminal settling velocity. We'll write it by U T. So when the velocity of the solid particle becomes constant, that velocity it's called the terminal settling velocity and the particle keeps on moving through the fluid volume at that constant velocity. Now what's the value of this terminal settling velocity? So just what we looked at, we had a force balance for a particle through a fluid bed. We got the expressions for this gravitational force and the buoyancy force. Now we need to look at the expression for the drag force. Now the drag force, this is proportional to the density and the kinetic energy of the particle. And also it's proportional to the surface area of the particle. So this gives us the relation between the drag force and the particle velocity as
Now, if you plug in these three in the force bus equation, also you know that at terminal settling velocity, what will have this summation of F is 0. So, from there, we will get the drag force. So, these are terminal setting velocity. So, we will denote this to be ut. Now, this equation can be simply rearranged to give ut equals square root of 2 rho p minus rho mg over ap rho p cd and rho. Now, for spherical particles, we get m equals the particle volume times its density. And also we get the surface area of the particle to be pi over 4 dp squared. Now if we plug in this value in this equation for a spherical particle, we will end up getting ut equals the square root of 4 dp rho p minus rho g over 3 cd rho. Now, this equation is valid for both laminar flow and turbulent flow. Now, for laminar flow, the drag coefficient which is cd that depends on the Reynolds number. It depends on the velocity and is expressed as a function of Reynolds number, which is given as cd equals 24 over Reynolds number. What the Reynolds number is given as? dv rho over mu. Now, as you are considering the terminal setting velocity, we will replace it by ut. So, if you simply plug in this relation into here, we will end up getting a relation ut to be So, simply replace this CD by this 24 over Reynolds number, where Reynolds number is given by this, and we will end up getting the expression for the terminal setting velocity for laminar flow to be something like this one. Now, for turbulent flow, CD becomes independent of Reynolds number and it becomes constant. And for turbulent flow, for a solid particle flow, flowing through a fluid bed, it's given by a constant approximately around 0 0.44. Now, simply if we plug in this equation over here, take 0 0.44 and take the constant term out, you will end up getting a relation for the turbulent flow to be One point seven five times the square root of dp times rho p rho over g over rho. So this is the expression for terminal selling velocity of a particle through a fluid bed when the flow is turbulent.